Hello everyone, Pastor John here at Selbu Lutheran Church, our lively Lutheran congregation out here in the wheat fields of Eastern Washington. We had technical difficulties on Sunday. Uh, our number one video person could not make it, our number two could not make it, our number three could not make it, and I could go on, but uh, we recorded it and we thought it was going to come on Facebook, but it did not. So this is Tuesday, and I am here and I'm going to go through the sermon. Uh, in a minute, I'm going to introduce my friend, Pastor Mark Crispell, who's retired and he's here visiting for a bit. He's going to do the readings. I'm going to have the prayer, and then at the end, uh, Pastor Mark has written some songs. He's going to sing a song, and that'll be it. So that'll be your service. I think it's going to get posted on YouTube and then connected to uh, Facebook. You, you folks know I'm not very techy, but uh, we're glad that you tuned in, and, and we promise next week we're going to be back as normal, but at least you'll get to hear uh, the sermon here, and, and we'll, we'll go from there. So... We're going to uh, start with a prayer, and then I'm going to have Pastor Mark come and read the lessons for today. Let's pray. Lord God, we're grateful for an opportunity to worship for those uh, who are watching online, a little different format, but we know we can take this time, Lord, to think about you and the importance you have in, in our lives. Today, Lord, we're thinking about one of the fruits of the Spirit, faithfulness. Help us to be faithful in our relationships with each other, with you, with ourselves. Bless all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Pastor Mark, come on in here, and I'll just say hello on your behalf. Thank Some you. of you have met Thank him, you. and he can say a little bit afterwards, but uh, I met him when he was 17. 17. And right. I was 19. 19. Yeah. And at Camp Frederick, and Pastor Jim Munner is probably going to watch this. And Jim Munner's got a deep voice. I don't know. If Mark can do a deep voice. Could you do a little? Not, not like I can't do it like he can. Let's, let's try it together. We'll go, hello, James. You ready? Yeah. Hello, hello James. James. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Pastor Munner, who was the pastor for the wedding for Shanette and me, uh, is a dear friend. Mark was in his church, and I'll let him say any more about that. But anyway, Mark will say what he wants. going to read the lessons, and I'll be back. So stay yep. tuned. Yeah, it's a real honor and privilege to come here and be able to share with you God's Word as it comes to us through three scripture readings. And so as we listen to the words, let those words um, soak in, uh, penetrate our world, our minds, our hearts, and uh, let it fill us with God's spirit of love and grace. I always enjoy being here with uh, the people of Selbu and with my good friend John. Uh, what I always say about John, wherever he is pastor, uh, the pastor, uh, the congregation is real. And by that, I mean they're genuine and they, they do good ministry together. So I'm glad to be here. And so let's, uh, we're going to hear our first reading <clears throat> comes from the first chapter of Ruth. Now, we've learned that throughout the Bible, God never calls us to be successful. Rather, the Lord calls us to be faithful. In this time of Israel's history, when the Israelites occupied the land of Canaan, one of the most heartwarming stories of faithfulness and loyalty does not actually involve an Israelite, but actually a young Moabite woman. Now, many of us have heard the story of Ruth, and we read portions of it today as a reminder of this touching and inspirational portion of Scripture. Ruth was a wonderful example of being faithful. So now, please listen to the reading from Ruth, chapter 1, verse 14 through 19, and also verse 22. At this, they wept aloud again. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, Nate said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God my God. 
Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, even if death separates you and me. Now, when Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. And so the two women went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women exclaimed, Can this be Naomi? So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the barley host harvest was beginning. Here ends the reading. Ruth the Moabite was an inspiration for all time. Our second lesson comes from the third chapter of, the, of 1 Corinthians. The Apostle Paul is making the distinction between milk and solid food. It is key that Paul is not talking about two Gospels. Paul was concerned that some of the Corinthians were attracted to spiritual junk food based more on their wisdom and eloquence. The true gospel is the word of Jesus Christ, and their faithfulness to that would be what would carry them through those difficult days in the early church and brought the message of Christ up to the current moment. Now, please listen to our reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Only servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord has assigned to each task. I planted the seed. Apollos watered it. But God has been making it grow. So, neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants, the one who waters, have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and something else is building on it. But each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Here ends the reading. And it is so true that Jesus Christ is the one foundation. And our foundation depends on him. The final lesson is from the Gospel of Luke in the first chapter. This is the well-known story about Mary and how she found out that she was carrying the Son of God. She was troubled at the words of the angels and afraid. But the angel told her not to be afraid and that all of this was something of God. Even though this was beyond her understanding, Mary decided to be faithful. Her powerful answer was, may your word to me be fulfilled. That was the point at which the angel left her. Now again, please listen to our reading from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, 
you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Now Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of the father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. Since I'm a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. You know, even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Here ends the reading. And Mary was such a beautiful and complex, yes, yet innocent example of God's faithfulness. Well, thank you, Pastor Mark. I'm back. And grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Get my cross turned around here. Faithfulness is part of the fruits of the Spirit. We had them listed over there for our Bible school. And the kids could do it with motions and one through nine, but I'm going to look so you can practice with me. So I'm going to look because I'm old and I forget things, but love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So you got those down? I got them down. Yeah, I, I'm pretty good except for the first eight. And that, <laughs> uh, it's good to be here. And again, I'm sharing this on a Tuesday, but kind of using the same notes I had Sunday. We thought we had it recorded, but it just didn't work out. Uh, we have been blessed, by the way, with all the work that our team has done. Originally, Jerry, Kylo, and family were over to get it set up, and then Julie Kincaid has really taken over, and Dee Brink's always back there with a the PowerPoint. And we're getting a few more, and I think we all learned some things by our, our little glitch, you know, because we got more yeah. fail-safe now. But... Uh, Faithfulness. Faithfulness means that we've established a good reputation, a good name in front of people. Uh, when I think of a relationship, let's say a marital, you all know I've been pretty, pretty open with you. I've been married twice before, and and if 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 somebody, if I got like ten seconds to say, you know, kind of to quote defend myself, whatever, which I don't. Uh, the one thing I might say is, in both marriages, I was faithful. That says a lot, and um, you know, I'm not patting myself on the back, but I'm just pointing the fact that being faithful is really important in a marriage, being faithful to God, being faithful to worship uh, the Lord, to read the Bible, to serve God, to witness, that's all about faithfulness. Faithfulness is like planning a trip to Yellowstone. Now you come over here for this here, we'll talk just yeah, a little yeah, bit about yeah. you. Okay, but by the way, Yellowstone from right here, I looked it up, is 578 miles, and it's about 10 hours of driving. Now, some of you guys would make it eight, and some of you would make it two or three days. <laughs> but one of the faithful things about that is the geyser is called Old Faithful. Old faithful, yeah. And yeah. many of you know the story with Pastor Mark. He lost his wife now 12 years ago. 12 years. And, yeah. And yeah. Uh, was at the funeral. I won't go through the whole story with that, but Holly had inspired my bike trip from where the road leads. She did. The end of 2010, 2011. Mark joined me from West Yellowstone to Pueblo, Colorado. It was, a bit, it was pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. He was preaching at the time. I, I didn't have a church. And, you know, we, he, we were both doing well, but I was, you know, quote, a little better shape. And and the reason was I had like 5,000 miles. And you know what, Mark, I'm going to say, Mark, 
I said, you're doing pretty well for a guy that came right off the pulpit. Off the pulpit. <laughs> did you feel like you did pretty well? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah he, no, he really, honestly, he, yeah. he's a good biker. I hate to admit that publicly here. But anyway, we went to Yellowstone. We got there, and his, in fact, his bike showed up, and the back rim was got a little bit out of what round on the on the train or the plane or something yeah, huh? yeah. I, we went to the bike shop and the main guy wasn't there but i i don't remember exactly how that went but i think i you use their equipment i, I use mean, their yeah, equipment yeah. <laughs> and i had the wheel up there and i was you know loosening this screw you know spoke and how'd i do you think pretty good i'm here you're here <laughs> <laughs> anyway we went up the out we saw old faithful pretty soon we and did. you know why we were confident that we would get to see old faithful the reason is, for I don't know how many years, but about every 65 minutes, Old Faithful Gee, there erupts. There, there it she goes. Is. There she is. She's there she faithful. goes. And yeah. you can travel from all around the world, anywhere you want. You're going to come. You're going to have a chance to see Old She's Faithful. Faithful. And yeah. Uh, yeah. so that's what we did. And it's it, it's just one of those things. Think about your relationships in life. Like Mark and I have known each other for well, a long time, like long I said. Time. And... And we've had, we had a 35 year gap where we hardly were in touch at all. He was in Maryland, I was Arizona and different things happened. We reconnected around Sedona. But when we connected, I knew that he was a faithful guy and within his marriage and our friendship and that I was. And that means a lot because there's a lot of life where you don't see a lot of faithfulness. Yeah. I mean, just right. out in the world or you hear the news, you say that you want, let's just say the news to be faithful to the truth. Do we get it? We're not sure. You know, it's like, what is the yeah. truth? We don't always, don't we don't always know about that. <laughs> but, but being faithful is important. I was reading the other day, and, and I know this that that uh, that it's more important in our lives not so much to be successful as it is to be faithful. And um, I knew a pastor way back when, and he he was a good pastor, and he was faithful. There was a tragedy in his life, and his wife was killed in a car accident. He was in a Volkswagen. A, it's in the countryside, and another car came this way, hit on the passenger side. Uh, his wife tragically died, and the pastor was injured, but he eventually came back. And that led to, he didn't stay at that church very long, and there was another church. And anyway, up and down, up and down, and he, did, he didn't marry the woman that everybody had planned for him. Can you imagine that? Yeah, imagine that. You know, there was, there was let's say, Mary out there <laughs> lost her husband, and here's the pastor. And instead of marrying her he, you know it's that kind of thing so he moved on and, and he eventually that a lot of troubles he eventually ended up in chicago as a juvenile parole agent and i remember he told me once he said john he said this is one time in my life he said, i love the church but all i have to do in this job is is to be faithful i need to show up he had his his clients who are young people often troubled and as, as long as he was faithful he didn't have to be successful or show any great returns and he said the church is all, and I don't know if you felt that way sometimes in your church. It's like, you want to be oh, yeah. faithful, and they want you to be maybe something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's You know right. what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's, you got to stick to it. You really do. You got to yeah. focus on the Word of God and, and who you are and why you're there as their spiritual leader. Yeah. You know? Pastor Mark uh, served how many churches in Maryland? Five churches in Maryland over 42 years. Wow. Yeah. And um, I... Uh, visited him in his last church and on a bike ride one time we we went back in the by a bike or a car saw another one or two yeah and he had nicknames for churches and we won't go through all those nicknames <laughs> they weren't all glamorous <laughs> that was the church oh yeah i remember that yeah, one <laughs> yeah right right <laughs> but uh but being faithful is, is such an important thing uh, i found mark that faithfulness is kind of a maturing process i mean i'm I would say I'm a little more faithful in, in some areas in my life than others. Now, I'm not as faithful now to, let's say, biking and exercising as when I was young. Now, that's there's no excuse for that. It's not so much age. But, I'm right there with you. But that's I have tough. excuses, yeah. but none of them help. Yeah. I don't know. How about you? Have you found uh, yeah, it's, I, it's hard I, to be remain faithful to is, all those things? It is hard sometimes to be faithful, uh, eating habits, exercise. It's easy to slough that off, you yeah. know? Uh, I don't know. Is that we're just is that part of being human? I guess. I th I, th I think it is, and I know you know as preachers we, we preach out there, and here we are going through the fruits of the spirit and faithfulness. Yeah. Right. Uh, 
we begin with God as we go through the whole story from Genesis on. We know God was always faithful. All the things that God did, we think of the Old always, Testament. Always. In the children of Israel, poor Moses goes up to get the Ten Commandments, and when he comes back, <laughs> they're worshiping idols, you know. They weren't being faithful to God. Just like people. You know? <laughs> yeah, they were. Well, I'd have done better, don't you think? Probably, Probably not. Yeah. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Probably thought. Yeah, Probably not, rather. <laughs> And another thing is, is uh, it's a spiritual process in the story that you read from the Bible in Ruth and Naomi, yeah. which is really well known, isn't oh, it? Uh, some well of those known. quotes are yeah. there, but but kind of that faithfulness, which in that one, I guess, went beyond boundaries or national it connections. It and Yeah. The whole thing about, I go where you're, go where yeah. you go. I mean, yeah, that just sticks with you. What a statement it to is. say that it with is. all of their differences and what they had to give up. Yeah, to stay together, and they did. You know? Yeah, it it it, uh, it happened that way. It was recorded in scripture, and uh, you'd think how many people they've inspired with their oh, faithfulness. Lots, lots of people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Faithfulness is is a selfless thing. I, I know one of the one of the things that I know most about faithfulness is on the other side. When I've had people that have not been faithful to me, like as a friend that lets me down, or yeah. it could be a little thing, like you're going to meet somebody and they don't show up, and they do it regularly, regularly, and then it's like if you don't have faithfulness, you don't you don't like trust them anymore, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. They're like <laughs> like you, yeah, right. like me, like yeah. here I am. <laughs> you weren't supposed to be in the picture. It's going to be me, and here you crowd me out. Yeah. Pretty soon it's going to be like. <laughs> See, I'm bigger than you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to go on a little bike ride, I think, aren't we? Next yeah, week, next we're gonna, week, I think. Yeah. We're going to go up to the trail of Coeur d'Alene. We're going to do some cycling. Three or there. four days of cycling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. get behind him. Since he's uh, younger and thinner than I am, I'm going to get a little <laughs> rope. And So are you ready for this? I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. Be, yeah. faithful. Be, faithful. Uh, be faithful. I will be faithful. <laughs> I'll, keep, I'll keep on pedaling. Yeah. <laughs> but part, part of being faithful, too, is accountability. I know uh, as a pastor, when I work with people, there are certain folks you know are going to do it. And around here, everybody knows the story of Bruce Kylo and the trees. Mm. Well, even as he got through his 80s, he was going to show up in that, I think it was a 1990 blue Dodge pickup. Pickup, get uh, that right. Pickup, yeah. And he'd come out here, and that was beyond, you know, the trees were already planted, but he'd be moving gravel here, and he'd spray weeds here, That's and he amazing. was just, and years after he died, we, we were still saying, Something we'd see something the weeds growing, or I guess that was another thing Bruce did. That was another thing Bruce did. But he was really faithful, and you, you met him. When I you met were here. him. What a, what an inspiring man. Yeah. And look out there on the morning or evening and see those trees. Yeah. Uh, you know, coming here, I got a little. You know, the roads. When you get down to the gravel roads, there aren't many signs. <laughs> And I wasn't sure if I was on the right road, and the GPS said I was, but I don't know. And then all of a sudden, I saw Bruce's trees. Wow. And I knew I, I knew I was here. You were here? I was here. Yeah. Cell boot. Yeah. And it's been a little while. We're trying to figure out how long, but the crosses were not up there last time you were here. No, I don't think they were. And yeah. we think, I think they went up right before Easter in 2018. You can correct me, anybody out there, but that's pretty close. Uh, to go, yeah, yeah, you'd be nice to me. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to cut this just a little bit short. But Mary was faithful, and Naomi, uh, you know, the, the 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 and in the New Testament, the whole story about Mary, the mother of Mary, and the quote is, is, is you read it, uh, this, he was going to be the Holy One, the Son of God. And you can only imagine how Mary must have felt as so, so young, and yeah, um, but she was faithful to that. He was faithful. She had every reason to doubt, yeah. but she didn't. Yeah, yeah. and uh, as they say, God bless Mary. <laughs> yes, God bless Mary. Yeah. Uh, well, I think we're going to wrap this up. Do you have any other thoughts on faithfulness, uh, Mark? Oh, any? I think you, I think you covered it. I think, think we yeah, covered it as, as you normally do. He, yeah, he yeah. Normally does a good job. Well, he yeah. says we try to keep it real. I'll just end with this. <laughs> Over the weekend, Mark's been here a couple days, but I was up in. Um, I went to the lacrosse uh, events, you know. Well, actually, Thursday night, Mark and I went in to one of the establishments in town and had something to eat and something to drink, I think. 
Yeah. 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 One of those establishments <laughs> that's open, <laughs> which was fun because some of my old pool tournament buddies, they were disappointed I didn't play much pool last year. So I promised them I'll be back this year. So there I am going to play pool down there at pastime. So good, good people. And then Friday we went down and I don't know why I just, you know, I had two weeks of Bible school. We had the 42 kids total. We had like 28 here and 14 in town. And, and of course I'm there and I had my silly hat on. Some of you have seen the pictures of me trying to look like a farmer, you know, farmer John. But Mark was noticing all the little kids coming up and giving me a big hug, you know, hey, Pastor John, hey, Pastor John. And it's like, I, you know, I said, well, we just got over Bible school, so it's not, it's not always quite this, you know, endearing. But, but I thought, you know, the best thing I can do here, other than just have a good time, if I could be faithful uh, to the witness of the gospel. And I, I thought one of the things I could do is invite people to church, which I did, and the reason that was effective, and I know that some of the people I talk to will come to church, is because some of the Selbu people have already talked to them. In other words, they had paved the way. They had planted some seeds. We've been thinking about coming to church. One man said, tell you the truth, John, I'm not really that religious, but this world's so messed up. says, we need something, some kind of foundation. I said, come on in. You know, they're, we're all welcome. And I got about six or seven email addresses and added them to the Selbu spirit and my musing. And I just felt, well, I need to be faithful to the gospel and encourage people to go to any church. Uh, we have four great churches in our area, and specifically, I'm, I'm the pastor here. So it was a lot of fun as I saw people come and share a little bit of their lives and the good and the bad, and, and to know that coming to church in these beautiful stained glass windows, you can't see today, but you usually see them, there's some, there's some love and commitment and joy and connection that comes there, and it helps us be faithful to the gospel. So we urge you, or I urge you, to remain faithful, first of all, to God, through Jesus Christ. If you're married to your spouse, your family and loved ones, and to your friend. And ultimately, when our time has come, uh, at the gate, we're going to be welcome. Thank you, thy faithful servant. And that's what we are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we're grateful. Uh, today for all the ways you connect with our lives. We're grateful for faithful people who have been there. Many of us think back, it might have been mom or dad, might have been grandma or grandpa. Sometimes our important people let us down, so someone else was faithful, a teacher, a pastor, somebody else in the neighborhood. So thank you for those faithful people. Also, Lord, we pray and continue to lift up People in our community, Caleb Burquist, who came back on Sunday. Many of us gathered. Lord, you were there with us as Caleb came and 40 or so people out at his mom and dad's. And we gathered around. He was in his wheelchair and, and uh, we had laying on of hands. We prayed for him. It was a powerful, powerful thing. And we knew that your faithfulness was there with Caleb as he's come back after three months of rehab after his very difficult accident. We continue to pray for Bud Ani, who's uh, back at the rehab in, in Whitman County now, feeling a little better. For Don Dean, also at the rehab. We pray for Marilyn Wally and many others who we lift up before you in our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, help us in every way to be faithful in our lives and in our joy. And we're grateful for the opportunities we have. And now, Lord, as we think about faithfulness, we think about how many times we have prayed together, and you please join me in the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to end with uh, Pastor Mark here singing. This will be a little bit of the crude part with my work here, but I think it's going to happen. Pastor? Oh, Lord, 
hear you call, Lord, I will follow you all my life. If it be your will, O oh Lord, through eternity, mold me, shape me, Lord, prepare my soul. Oh, Lord. in my heart lead me into your precious love oh Lord I hear call, Lord, I will follow you all my days. If it be your will, O oh Lord, through eternity, mold me, shape me, Lord, prepare my soul. Well, thank you, Pastor Mark. Thanks, all of you, for tuning in. And we'll see you next time. It'll be a little more on the regular tune, but I hope you enjoyed this. God bless you all.